station in there again, please. Well, let's continue our look at the Chicago Suburban Radio Association's Field Day on Saturday, June 27, 2010 at Veterans Park in North Riverside, Illinois. Let's have a little bit of a refresher course on what Field Day is all about and refresh our memories on Field Day is Chicagoland radio personality and Chicago Suburban Radio Association member Scott Childers. Well, Field Day is an exercise every year. It's the uh, last weekend in June, and it's an emergency preparedness exercise, which is we come out here, we operate temporary stations with temporary power. In other words, we're off the grid. Uh, we set up temporary antennas, which you've probably seen in this piece already, and uh, we operate for 24 hours, and the idea is to uh, try to contact as many stations as possible and uh, see how well you do. In the case of an emergency, obviously you're not going to have electrical power, you're not going to have the internet, cell phone, so on and so forth, so we actually operate completely off the grid, and that way we see how many contacts we can make. But it's also, you know, it's, it's, it's a, um, what am I trying to say? You know, it's a serious uh, thing, but it's also, we have fun too. I mean, you've been out here several years, so, you know, we all have a good time, we operate, and we have a little barbecue, which is getting ready to go now. And the whole idea is, is just to have fun and get people who aren't normally on the air a chance to get on the air as well, and also expose people out of the hobby to see how ham radio works. A lot of people think of it as an old hobby, but it's actually cutting edge technology all the way to digital voice and uh, using uh, the same voice over IP protocol that Skype uses and that they use in Google uh, Voice and Google Video now. Uh, these were all things that were actually pioneered by the ham operators well before they were used in the mainstream. Well, we're back and I'm now with Matt who's looking to join possibly the Chicago Suburban Radio Association. But what, uh, what we want to talk about today, Matt, is that you have a connection, I guess, with Ham Radio and the Boy Scouts that you were involved with a certain project with the Boy Scouts? Yes. Um, I went up with Troop 1983 and uh, set up a two meter station and worked with Ed over here to uh, do, let the boys do some contacts over two meters. Um, we set up a simplex station, we were about 50 miles apart, and uh, gave, gave the, the, the kids that had come out there and wanted a chance to talk on the radio a chance to experience ham radio and actually got some of them interested. So uh, there's three boys from that troop alone that um, we're doing, we, we do a study session once a week now, and we're going to be, I'm going to be taking them to go get their license. So they were really interested in it. Fantastic. Now, you mentioned Simplex Station. For our audience, well, I think our audience and myself could gather that, that that means then perhaps like a very simple station, a very simple setup then. Is that what that means, Simplex? Um, well, Simplex is not using a repeater. It's a radio to radio, similar to like the walkie-talkies that you might buy in the store. Um, the, the station itself was actually a very simple station. I, I just pulled the radio out of my car, set it on a table with a battery and an antenna. And um, we were, luckily we were up on a hill, uh, which was what gave us the uh, ability to talk such a great range. Um, like the walkie-talkies that you might buy in the store, you might get two miles tops out of those. Um, but we, here we were talking over 50 miles. Oh, fantastic. And we mentioned about the Boy Scouts that some of these particular kids might be... Uh, now, can they join a club like this? I mean, is there age restrictions? For, you have to be certain age or with, with AM radio? or No, um, there's no age restriction. And I believe the youngest ham to ever receive his license was six years old. So you just have to be able to pass the test. Oh, wow. So the idea, I guess, is for these Boy Scouts to maybe come up with other great ideas. I mean, that they could build their own emergency communication network then perhaps someday. Certainly. Um, I've also, a lot of them are interested in, in joining like a Racy's Club or something like that, the Radio Amateur Civil Emergency Services. Um, maybe I've, I've taken uh, the whole troop actually participated in going to the um, Skywatch, uh, the Skywarn. Um, weather spotting class so they know that with that class they could actually be a, um, a spotter not not a storm chaser but a spotter um, just somebody that 
tells the, the wind and uh, if they do see a funnel cloud or something like that. Um, and even at their age, they can do it. Okay, thanks so much, Matt. Any final thoughts or anything else we should know? Um, no, I think that's it. Just ham radio is a lot, a lot of fun. The only thing I'd give one warning because since I got into it, it's become um, addictive. So I want to keep going further and further, keep progressing. So I just, just be forewarned for that. Now Scott tells us about the different types of ham or amateur radio licenses. The technician license is the entry level license. I, be I believe it's 25 questions and uh, that will get you very entry, le entry level uh, communications on uh, the local bands here in the community. Very, uh, uh, not necessarily local as in you're not going to be able to talk to Spain or Portugal or what have you like that with your voice. You could do that with uh, Morse code, but uh, it is the handheld radios uh, on the 2 meter and 440 meter band that uh, people will use. Uh, very similar to uh, the uh, FRS radios or the business band radios if you've seen those. That's, that is the entry level. After that you would move up to the general class license which is another test that will give you access to talk worldwide over uh, the what we call the HF the high frequency bands which are 7 megahertz also uh, 14 megahertz also goes up to 21 megahertz so on and so forth like that um, that is mainly what we're using out here at field day which will allow you to talk literally around the world then there's the extra class, which is the top class, and that gives you access to all the uh, bands that are uh, in use for amateur radio operators. So what it does, it's, it's incentive licensing. In other words, they give you a little slice here, you pass the next test, you get a little bit more. If you go all the way and take your extra license and pass that, you are, you are able to operate on all the bands that are allocated by the FCC. You know, meter is a common term, or measurement rather, used in ham radio and or amateur radio. But what does it actually mean? Once again, to tell us more about meters and measuring in meters and what is a meter, is Chicago Suburban Radio Association Scott Childers. The way they get meters is that was the way they used to measure radio waves back back in the early 20s, back at the dawn of radio, because uh, a radio wave at seven megahertz would measure 40 meters wide, whereas uh, a radio wave at 144 megahertz would measure two meters wide, much smaller. And as you go higher in frequency, the size of the wave gets smaller. Just think of your microwave uh, oven and, and how uh, that's way up into the gigahertz, and they're very small waves, and that's what allows that to cook your food. That's why, like on your cell phone, you don't want to uh, you don't want to keep that near your head too long because uh, the waves are very small. Whereas when you get lower, let's say the uh, AM broadcast band, that's about 266 meters. That is how big that wave would be in a full cycle. And I know I'm getting a little technical on you, but you can get more about that at qrz.com too. So. That's pretty uh, simple um, radio theory, radio electronics theory. For more information on the Chicago Suburban Radio Association, please visit their very special website at www.csraham.com.